Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. First Sunday of Lent is a day when we traditionally, every year, in a different account of the gospel, hear about the Lord and his journey into the desert. Siempre el primer domingo de la cuaresma se trata de la, del tiempo de Jesús, 40 días en el desierto. This year we have also, uh, and I think it's important to kind of look at them together, the account from Genesis no? as to how, uh, how the serpent sort of insinuated sin into the hearts of the first parents, Adam and Eve. I would like to spend a little time kind of comparing a little bit the two and see what it is mostly that the gospel is seeking to convey to us. Esto del libro de Génesis que este año tenemos como la primera lectura que nos indica cómo el, cómo el, el enemigo del ser humano, el, la serpiente, el, el diablo, cómo se, se metió, podríamos decir, a establecer una duda en la mente de Adán. You see, in Genesis, the principal point is that the serpent introduces a doubt into Adam and Eve. Now, I think I should say at the beginning, the story of Adam and Eve, in this, especially when it comes to the entrance of sin into the world, is not like a newspaper telling us what happened that day. It's not like a podcast. Where we're, it's, it's, it's a revelation of what's really the most important aspect of how we were made. It's kind of parabolic that way. It's como parabola. Pero dice una verdad muy importante, varias verdades, several truths, very important. How we were made, como en qué, en qué, en qué, en, en qué condición Dios no hizo la creación del ser humano, y también pues cómo entró el pecado. These are the truths, es, es algo muy profundo, y, and, and they're ancient texts, and so we must read them very carefully and not impose too much. Pero el primer punto es que, es que Dios estableció el ser humano con amistad con él, ¿no? You see, the human race was begun in Adam and Eve with a, with a kind of friendship with God. And God had made a garden for them. Porque es muy importante el detalle. Hizo un jardín, ¿no? Y pues el jardín lo estableció Dios. Uh, that's to say, God made them a, a place that was green and that was fruitful and they were at peace there. They didn't lack for anything, tenían todo lo necesario, no tenían hambre, no tenían sed, porque Dios estableció con su gracia. The way the church understands this first reading is that, is that, is that God established really already a sense of friendship with us and really already the life of grace. Y estaban viviendo en la gracia. Porque la gracia significa solamente esto, que tenemos amistad con Dios y lo conocemos. Y tenemos fe en su bondad. You see, to be established in grace means that, that we know who God is and we have faith in his goodness and we trust him. No? Esto es lo que establece la primera lectura. This, this basic mysterious truth as to how God loved us, how he made us, and how we, we had a good relationship with him. Amistad con Dios. Dios caminaba en el jardín con ellos. No? That's a very intimate thing. Bueno, la serpiente entra y lo que... El, el propósito del demonio en ese momento es introducir la duda, the doubt. Is it true what God told you? ¿Es verdad lo que te dijo Dios que no puedes comer de ese árbol? No. Oh, a question. Ah. Vamos a... Pues, ¿por qué preguntas, no? Pues porque yo te digo que no es verdad. Because I tell you it's not true. He tells you you will die, but that's not true. He's jealous of you. No, entonces introduce esta incertidumbre. Ah, pues a lo mejor Dios no nos quiere decir algo. Or maybe we can't trust him. Or maybe he's not looking out for our interests. Or maybe, or maybe there's something better if we just kind of separate from... Es que el demonio quiere separar la relación. He wants to break the relationship between this friendship, this human race in the first parents that is established in grace and in peace with God, and he wants to introduce the break, no? Porque el pecado al, al, al fin de cuentas es, es negar que Dios está al cuidado de nosotros. 
It is to deny that God is looking out for our interest and that God and that God speaks the truth to us. This is the great doubt that enters into the human history, no? This, eh, eh, con, este, con esta es la tentación principal. This is the first great temptation. To tell the human race, God can't be trusted. He's not looking out for your interest. And I'll make you a better deal. It's good to remember this was a garden. They had everything. It's not, but the doubt, see, the doubt enters the mind This is not a temptation about, you're hungry, I'll give you something to eat. This is a temptation about, what do you believe about the God who made you? And the sin really is that they stopped believing that he loved them and that he would take care of them and that he spoke the truth to them. Y cuando empezaron a negar, este amor de Dios y negar que Dios era un Dios de la verdad y que nos dice la verdad y que está buscando nuestro bien cuando eso empezó en el corazón del ser humano entró el pecado because it broke the relationship they no longer trusted God so God didn't take away the garden the garden kind of disappeared because the garden was about the place that God had made where this trust Mercy and truth lived. This is something that's very basic to this, to this account in Genesis about sin and about where it comes from. And it also tells us about when Christ comes into the world, what he comes to repair. Because Christ comes into the world to undo where the sin came from. No? Reconocer que al principio el pecado entró cuando el ser humano dejó de, de pensar y dejó de creer en la bondad de Dios. De ahí es donde entró. Ya sabemos entonces a qué vino Jesús. Como el Hijo de Dios que entra al mundo para restablecer esta confianza con Dios. To reestablish this confidence in God. To reestablish this sense of it. He's a God who tells the truth and he really is looking out for what's good for us. Que es un Dios que sí está buscando cómo darnos lo bueno y estar al cuidado de nosotros. Jesús viene para restablecer. Jesus did not come principally to fix all the little sins in the world or even the big sins in the world. We have to get to the root of the problem. No, la raíz del problema es que el ser humano ya no confía en el Dios de la verdad. Y prefiere escuchar la voz del demonio que le dice, yo te puedo hacer un negocio mejor. I can make you a better deal. Because he's really not to be trusted. The sin is not the doubt. The sin is then accepting the doubt and refusing to believe in the goodness of God. That's the sin. One can wonder, but then one must reaffirm. They had a moment. Both of them did. Y hay que saber que los dos son, bueno, responsables y somos res This will help us to kind of see what's happening in this journey of Jesus into the desert. The desert, first of all, porque ya no existe el jardín, ¿no? Que estableció Dios. The desert is where he goes out and he's hungry. He's like us. He is an exile. He enters into a world where the, it's kind of hostile. The desert shows you that. None of us live in a perfect garden. None of us live where everything is just, everything's provided and nobody's hungry and nobody's thirsty and nobody has to trouble about, about serpents and snakes and scorpions y las tarantulas que están en la calle. No, it, it, this is the desert because the desert is kind of a, a hostile place. That is kind of, it's, it, es una imagen de este mundo, ¿cierto? No? Porque es donde hay peligro. Ya no existe este jardín. Pero Jesús llega para restablecer algo del jardín. And so let's just take this one step at a time without going too long. Pero hay que notar que cuando se acerca el demonio a Jesús, le hace una pregunta al principio. When the demon approaches, the devil is very patient. He's been waiting a long time. But 
but God knows. So he approaches, and the, note the question that he asks Jesus. First he says, if you are the Son of God, si tú eres el Hijo de Dios, and then he gives them three temptations. Si tú eres el Hijo de Dios. In other words, if you are someone who has this special relationship with God, hijo y padre, padre y hijo, que tienen esta relación, because that's what that means. Si tú tienes una relación especial con Dios Padre, si es verdad, te voy a hacer unas preguntas. Oh, there's the questions to the demon again. He likes to ask questions. Como dice el Papa, uno no puede dialogar con el diablo. Don't dialogue with the devil. Pope Francis says, remember that. Jesus doesn't really dialogue with him. He just answers him. If you are the Son of God, to understand the question, it's about the relationship, just like it was in the beginning. It was about the relationship. And really, all three temptations have to do with the demon asking, the devil asking Jesus, is it true that he's going to take care of you? Is it true that he will make sure that you're all right? Is it true that he will give you all the things you need? Porque le quiere introducir la duda. He wants to introduce the doubt again in this one. The devil may not have known exactly who Jesus was, but he knew this much. This one has a relationship with the Father. I have to break it. Tal vez el diablo no sabía exactamente quién era Jesús, pero sabía que este tiene relación con el Padre, y mi propósito es quebrar la relación. Make him deny it. Make him doubt it. Make him get rid of it. No, it's just... It's a... Jesus is hungry. If you are the Son of God. Then turn these rocks into bread. And don't be hungry anymore. Because if you are the Son of God, you have certain power. You have certain power. So just use it. Arreglate las cosas. Fix things. You can. But this is the problem with that temptation, the first one. Do it without thinking about what God, your Father, tells you or says to you or speaks to you. This relationship, do it without reference to the relationship. La tentación, la primera tentación es, hay que hacer esto sin referir a la relación que tienes con el Padre. Tú mismo hazlo. You do it. You've got the power. You're the Son of God. Hazlo. Hay que arreglar las cosas, ¿no? Don't ask your father about it. You can do it. Ah. Jesus doesn't dialogue with the devil, but he gives him the answer. It is written in Scripture. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Es que el, 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 el ser humano vive de la palabra que sale de Dios. Entonces la relación es que yo oigo lo que me dice el Padre. I hear what the Father tells me. I will not fix things without reference to the God who has given me his word or without reference to me who has my word. The temptation that we all face every day is to fix things without asking God about it without consulting the law, without consulting justice. No, es porque este mundo le gusta arreglar las cosas sin referir a Dios ni al ser humano. Yo mismo, yo solo, déjame. That's the temptation. Fix it yourself. Don't worry about anybody else and don't worry about God. No. Because Scripture says you live by the word that comes from God's mouth. Okay. Second temptation. Okay, if you're the son of God, you see, it's the same question again. Si eres el Hijo de Dios. Throw yourself down. Because scripture says, you see, porque también el diablo conoce las escrituras, scripture says that he will send his angels to lift you up. So just throw yourself down. This relationship you have with God, what a great thing. He'll pick you up. In other words, he wants to manipulate 
He wants Jesus to kind of like manipulate his relationship to the Father and make it into a game or a power thing, testing God the Father. Don't, I'm not going to throw myself down because it is written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. What does that mean? That means treating God like a Coke machine. You put a dollar or the credit card in the thing and you punch the button and he gives you whatever you want. God is not to be manipulated. He is not to be mocked. He is not to be trifled with. And that's part of the relation. No, la relación implica que yo, como hijo de Dios, ustedes como hijos e hijas de Dios, atendemos al Padre y no lo vamos a tentar, no vamos a tratar de manipular la relación. Because the devil is saying, oh, he loves you. He'll do whatever you say. Just because he's really saying, just do whatever you want. He's going to take care of you. If you are the son of God. Nah. But también está escrito, but it's also written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. That phrase, you shall not tempt the Lord your God, shows up in Deuteronomy, no? In el desierto, los israelitas tentaron a Dios. El, y, el, y los, los Salmos 94 dice, dice, este pueblo que, que me tentaron por 40 años. What is that? They were constantly demanding things. If you love us, you're going to give us more manna from heaven. If you love us, you're going to give us more water. If you love us, if you love us you're going to give us the, the bread that comes down from heaven, the, 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 the quail. If you, it's, uh, sh, sh. What have you done for me lately? Uno no se trata con Dios así. Uno espera lo que Dios da. Le pide, pero no con esto que me debes. Like you owe me. Because I'm your son, I'm your daughter, you owe me. No, no, no. No es como que me debes. Dios es bueno y es mi padre. Yo le pido y él responde. Pero no porque yo tengo derecho. It's really to manipulate the relationship. And he rejects that. Rechaza la, la segunda tentación. And just, I think the third temptation is the most, how would we say, it's the most in your face. No, la tercera tentación yo creo que es la más fuerte. Porque va directo al punto. He says, I will give you all the kingdoms of the earth. He shows them all the, todos los reinos del mundo. All the glitter and all the show. Todo el poder y todo el, el control y todo eso. Yo te doy todo esto. Si me adoras. He's asking to be worshipped, the demon is. Si me adoras, yo te doy todo esto. Think about it. The kingdoms of the world, the power, the, 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 the show, no, todo el show, y todo, the glitter and all that sort of stuff. The devil can offer that. And it's like he's saying, because you know, como que está diciendo el demonio, porque tú sabes que tu padre no te va a dar esto. Because your father will not give you the kingdoms of the world. Of course not. Because God not is, is not about power, he's not about the show, he's not about the glory, he's not about all that, all the, all the, the manipulating, no, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain like in the Wizard of Oz. He's not interested in that. No. No. Yo te puedo dar todo esto. No más tienes que negar que tienes un Padre en el cielo. You just have to. But I don't want that. And neither do we. El Hijo de Dios, un hija de Dios, no, no quiere el reino del mundo. No quiere el poder. No quiere el control. No. Porque el reino de Dios no tiene nada que ver con eso. Because the kingdom of God has nothing to do with the power and the glitter and the show. Which is why the devil says it so carefully. I will give you this. The father won't. Of course he won't. Because that will destroy us. Destroying us now. All the power, control, money, all the things that make the world move. Of course we don't want that. 
Well, we shouldn't want that. So Jesus rejects that, of course. Get behind me, Satan. Notice that's the only time in the entire New Testament scripture that we had today from Matthew that Jesus calls him by name. Up before that is the devil, is el demonio, but al final dice Satanás, porque conoce el nombre. Retírate. You shall love the Lord your God alone. Him alone shall you adore. Jesus triumphs over all three attempts to break the relation, to introduce the doubt, to make it possible for Jesus to kind of go his own way apart from his relation to the Father. And he rejects it three times. And he does it so that we can learn something. Jesus comes to help reestablish that relation where we trust the Father, he knows what is good, he speaks the truth, and he opens his heart to us. And he doesn't offer us the kingdoms of the world. A fin de cuentas, el Señor triunfa sobre las, el esfuerzo del demonio de, de romper esta relación con Dios Padre. Y este es nuestro camino. Because we are weak. And we are subject to these temptations. We do like to do things on our own, without reference to God. We do like to somehow say to God, if you love me, you'll give me this. We test him. And sometimes we would like to have the kingdoms of the world and all the power and all the glory. Let us think deeply about what Jesus rejects. And let us think a little bit more deeply about what it is that he calls us to in reestablishing this relationship with God the Father which is why he comes. No, muy fácilmente nosotros nos, por débil, débiles que somos, aceptamos las tentaciones del poder, del control, y también de tentar a Dios. Pero Jesús ha triunfado sobre esto. Lección para nosotros. This is a lesson for us. Let us think about what we really want and realize what Jesus really wants to give us. And let's take Lent to reaffirm that we want him to give us these things, the freedom of the children of God. Que Dios nos ayude a recibir con corazón abierto lo que realmente Jesús nos quiere dar. Amen.